This is Seth David for SchoolofBookkeeping.com, bringing to you a very special screencast. This time we're talking about Google Sheets versus MS Excel, round one. Microsoft Excel versus Google Sheets. Does it really need to be a competition? Well, yeah, it kind of does because it makes for a good blog post. And uh, in this case, probably a series of them. Not probably, definitely, because I already called this part one, which indicates that there's going to be a part two, at least. Maybe even a part three, four, or five. And if I want to be like Rocky, I might have like 13 parts to the series. <clears throat> Seriously, though. Um, you know, the idea, and I, I did meet with some resistance and bouncing the idea off of some people about doing a course on Google Sheets at schoolofbookkeeping.com. <clears throat> Most people said, no, do something on Excel. That's what everyone wants. And it reminded me of when I was a kid and my grandmother used to say, well, if the other kids are all jumping off a building, does that mean you're going to do that too? And I kind of feel that way about this. that Just because everybody's using Excel, just because that's what everybody wants, doesn't mean that's what everybody needs. And so I thought about this a lot and decided to do the course on Google Sheets anyway. Don't get me wrong, we're going to cover plenty of Excel too. But I think it's really important, and I think being the um, headmaster, if you will, or whatever you want to call it, for schoolofbookkeeping.com, I feel like part of my responsibility is to, to guide people somewhat, in a sense, especially when it comes to using the tools that I think provide certain advantages over the existing tool that everybody already uses, vis-a-vis -vis Microsoft Excel. I don't think we'll ever not use Excel. I think Excel will always have its place. But I think more and more there are, well, let me give you an example. I did a one-on-one -on -one training this morning, the morning that I'm making this recording. And in that training, the, uh, the bookkeeper that I was working with has, excuse me, a restaurant for a client who, I guess prior to her taking over, had never really properly managed the, um, the tip payouts. And I've seen this a lot. I've seen this in almost every restaurant whose accounting I've ever looked at and taken over and consulted with. It's often not managed properly. A lot of people not knowing accounting think, oh, we got money and it's income, right? But people leave tips on their credit cards. Those tips are an income. They're actually a liability, right? Because you just receive money that's not yours. Now, granted, at the end of the night, the restaurant paid out the cash for those tips. So it washes out. So the accounting on that is that out of my total receipts, I have to carve out the, the tip portion, put that in a liability. And then when I pay out the cash against that, it clears out that liability. So everything's even and I don't overstate my income by including the tips that were paid on people's credit cards. So at the end of the session, I suggested to her that she create a Google Sheet and share it with the client and create a form in the Google Sheet so that the client can use that to do their daily cash reconciliations. Why does that make so much more sense than Excel? Because it's shared. It's one document in one place that both of them can access at the same time if need be. But the bottom line is it's shared in real time. So it makes a, a, a lot more sense to use Google Sheets for something like that as opposed to having a worksheet in Excel that you email back and forth. And it's simple. You create a template and train the client on how to copy that tab over each day to create that day's reconciliation. Very, very simple. And then you create a new workbook probably for each month, right? So each uh, Google Sheet that you have would be for an entire month's worth of daily cash reconciliations. That keeps it organized. It keeps an audit trail in place. It makes it easy to go back and see how did we come up with our numbers, which we then booked in, let's say, QuickBooks Online or, or Zero or whatever cloud accounting package we're using, because I hope you're using a cloud accounting package. And yes, restaurants can do very well using QuickBooks Online or Zero for that matter to keep track of their day-to-day -day accounting and sales. So there's your example of where Google Sheets, I think, has some definite advantages over using Excel for a specific purpose. So really when it comes down to wanting to be able to share and collaborate. So the objection, so that takes care of the objection of, well, everybody else is using Excel, so I gotta learn Excel. Now the next objection is, well, still everybody else is using Excel, so I gotta learn Excel at least so I can work with people who use Excel, right? So if I learn Google Sheets, I'm not gonna know how to use Excel. Wrong again. And that's why I ultimately decided to do the course first on Google Sheets because I want to stress, I can't stress enough, how once you learn how to do something in Google Sheets, it works the same exact way in Excel. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. A lot of people like to learn things like uh, VLOOKUPs, right? Or some ifs. Those are some popular ones. And people think of them as pretty sophisticated. They're really not. And guess what? Google Sheets does use them. And they're in exactly the same form 
as Excel. So here's the very spreadsheet that I created in the Bootstrapping Your Bookkeeping, a course on Google Sheets course. And if you'll uh, follow with me over here, when I go to the name, or not the name rather, but the name type, notice that we're using a VLOOKUP here in the formula bar. And the VLOOKUP format of the formula is identical to Excel. I could copy this, this formula into Excel, and if all the other data were laid out in the same manner, it would work. I wouldn't have to change a thing. Okay, so VLOOKUPs work beautifully. So again, learning how to do it in Google Sheets means you've just also learned how to do it in Excel. The difference is you doing it in Google Sheets, again, is you're, you're learning how to do this stuff, write these formulas, and at the same time giving yourself exposure to the more powerful collaboration tool that is Google Sheets, because Excel doesn't provide you with that. That's, stuff, that's where Google Sheets has some definite and decided advantages over Excel, is in the powerful sharing and collaboration technology that exists here. Um, so then you say to me, okay, Seth, well, what about pivot tables? And I say, what about them? Here was a pivot table that I created off of this Google Sheet that shows you monthly expenses by category, right? Originally, this was actually done as monthly expenses by vendor. Want to see how hard it is to do this? Over here in the report editor, I can exclude the category field, and then I can, and notice that went away, and then I can come over here and I can add in name now it gives me uh, actually it'll give me income and expenses because it gives me things for all names right accepting that I had already filtered this for name type and limited it to show only vendors so now I've got monthly expenses by vendor right that was hard and I, so again anything I can do in Excel I can do in Google Sheets now the the final objection that I get that I think is significant to talk about here is well you know what's it's true excel i can make much prettier looking spreadsheets right here's our uh, schoolbookkeeping.com template that we offer whenever i do a video on excel you'll pretty much see some variation on this template being used here's a, a blank work paper and of course these are available for download in our uh, <clears throat> schoolbookkeeping.com free for of course all students so here's a generic work paper I've created so you can just get in here and kind of label your columns and you know do simple calculations and things of that nature. So the question is could I create something that looks as gorgeous as this in Google Sheets? I don't know, can we? Let's see. Let's come over here and let me highlight the entire spreadsheet and let's go to my fill formatting option and let's turn turn everything green, right? Cuz it's like a chalkboard, like being in school. And then let's get rid of the grid lines. We can do that in the view menu. Goodbye grid lines. And then maintaining perfect consistency with this, we start at A6 and we're going to go down to I28. Let's see if we can create something like that. So let's go to 28 over to column I. Okay. And let's come over here and let's find a format that maybe is similar, right, to that. That's kind of a nice light yellow. Again, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to look exactly the same. But you can get, as you can see, pretty darn close. Now let me highlight this whole range because what I don't have is here, you know, I have the kind of the light colored uh, lines by using the borders. Now Google Sheets didn't always have this. Google Sheets keeps enhancing. That's the other thing. Google Sheets keeps enhancing this by adding functionality. So let's go over to my borders and I'm going to use my border color options, right? I've already got it selected here where I want the light gray. So I've got that selection done. Then I can click here, which basically says shade the whole region you know, all the uh, columns and rows, the, all the borders, with that light gray that I just chose. So I click on that, and boom. And now I've got something that looks pretty much exactly like the Excel version here. The shades might be off slightly, but for the most part, it's practically identical. For all practical purposes, it's identical. So there goes the objection of I can make it look prettier in Excel. It's true to some extent. I can still do more with Excel. And I'm not going to lie, there are certain things that Excel definitely handles better than Google Sheets. But by and large, in my experience and opinion, frankly, the advantages that the powerful sharing and collaboration options provide in Google Sheets oftentimes will trump any advantages of using Excel. You want to know what the biggest advantage is of Google Sheets over Excel? I'll give you a second to think about it. Google Sheets is free. It doesn't cost a dime. All you need to do is take a free Gmail account and that gives you access to Google Docs and you can access Google Sheets absolutely free. That was the very inspiration for the very course that I'm talking about here called Bootstrapping Your Bookkeeping, a course on Google Sheets. Why? Because 
I was approached by a blogger who, you know, doesn't make a whole lot of money, doesn't have a whole lot of expenses, doesn't have a whole lot of accounting to report, but also doesn't want to keep everything in a shoebox. So I said, great, set something up in Google Sheets, keep track of your expenses in a check register like this. And then you can, you know, without really having to be, you know, very smart, and I'm not saying the person wasn't smart, I'm sure she's very smart, but the point being, it's not difficult, it's not a big learning curve. The hoop you have to jump through is much wider than you think in terms of learning how to create something like what you're looking at on screen right now, and then using that to create simple reports like monthly revenue by customer and monthly expenses by vendor, using pivot table reports in Google Sheets. So do I think Google Sheets is better than Excel? No, I think they're different. I think that there are uh, many cases where I'll use Excel and not use Google Sheets because I don't need to share and collaborate. The minute I don't have that need, Excel's better. It, there are certain things, that, as I said, that Excel does better. And it still does do a few more things than Google Sheets. Um, and it's the more familiar ground. But as soon as I have something that I want to share and collaborate with somebody on, Google Sheets wins every single time every single time, especially once I discovered that I could do things like pivot tables, that I could write the exact same formulas like VLOOKUPs and SUMIFs in order to, uh, you know, in order to, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, manipulate the information to present it in the way that I want. So uh, do me a favor, do yourself a favor. Sign up for schoolofbookkeeping.com. We've always got promotions going on. We make it dirt cheap, and, and frankly, I think we give it away probably too cheap. But, uh, and that won't always be the case necessarily, but while we're new and growing, uh, take advantage of us. Take advantage of the opportunity to come in here for almost nothing. In fact, in some cases, when we're running a 14-day free trial, you can actually get in here for nothing, at least for 14 days, and go audit the courses. Right? Go check us out. See if you don't learn something. See if it's not worth the $28 a month you then have to spend afterwards at a minimum. And, of course, we have larger plans for people who want more. Want one-on-one -on -one time with me, we've got plans that include that. So um, I know I'm turning the tutorial into a bit of a sales pitch here, but uh, it's because I feel so strongly and I feel so passionate about this. And, and I really just want everybody to take advantage of this because I really think it's a powerful resource that you can learn from to improve your business or improve your practice as a bookkeeper, an accountant, or a small business owner. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.